Good evening, everyone. I am Prophet Charlene Denise Holtz, and I just want to, we want to welcome you to our home tonight. We are on our back porch just giving God praise and glory because this is the day that he has made. So we just welcome all of you that are viewing in tonight. We thank God for you, and we pray that God will bless you in larger territory. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we're just going to rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to pray and get out the way so God can get in the way and have his way. God is always up to something. So we just got to incline our ears to hear what God is saying. Are you ready? I am ready. Hope you all had a great day. Oh, my God, I did. And I just thank God for another day, and it's so good to be with you all tonight. New Hope, you know what we are doing. We are embracing the promises of hope through what? Through prayer, through praise, and the pursuit of God. We love you, God bless you, and we're just going to pray. Heavenly Father, we come boldly before your throne of grace, just lifting you up. Because your word says, if I be lifted up, God, you would draw all men unto thee. And God, we're asking you to draw somebody tonight, God, who don't know you in the pardon of their sins. God, that they will accept you as their personal Savior. God, we pray that your people will hear what you are saying today, God, and it will make a radical change in their life, God. We just thank you, God. We praise you, God. We glorify your name. Your name is great and greatly be praised, God. We love you with all of our hearts and all of our soul. God, to you be the glory. To you be the praise, God. And we lift you up and magnify. We magnify your holy name. Your name is great and greatly be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. Yes, y'all just feeling the spirit of the Lord. Woo! Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, Lord. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Yes. Prophetess. Hello, how are you? I am feeling fantastic tonight. I am too. All right. Just to be in this Hello, presence. everybody. Welcome yeah. to our Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. Amen. We're on our patio tonight, outside in the fresh air, and hopefully God will send us fresh new mercies again tonight, yeah. as he does every morning. Listen, go ahead and share this with all of your family and your friends. Alert your neighbors that we are on for Bible study. Let's give it to hear what the Lord yeah. has to say to us. Amen. 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 We are yeah. so grateful and we are so thankful. Mm. Take a few minutes now. Go ahead and press that share button. bless you tonight. Amen. Had a great day today? Had a wonderful day today. All right. Well, let's get right to it. Amen. Let's get right to the word tonight. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you, we praise you, and we give your name glory. For this is the day that you have made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. God, like always on this night, we pray that you will give us an ear to hear, a heart to receive, and a mind to do what your word will instruct us tonight. Give us fresh new rhema, fresh new revelations as always. 
so that we may not err, but walk worthy before you. This we ask in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. 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 <laughs> well, listen, welcome tonight uh, to our Tuesday Night Live Bible study. Uh-huh. We are still broadcasting virtually. And we want to thank all of our family, our church family, our New Hope family, and all of our covenant partners from around the state and uh, these United States, from the West Coast to the East Coast, from the North to the South, and up down through the Midwest. Thank you for joining us tonight and praying for us as we continue uh, to pray for you. We are so elated and delighted to have this opportunity tonight, amen, to share in this word. Yes. This is a epic week for us because this year, this week, we are celebrating our 37th year mm. as pastors of the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church wow. of Miami. Mm. Wow, 37 years ago. 37 long years. Wow, wow. I was only 30 years old and you was only 29 yeah. uh, when we came to the New Hope Church. And wow. what a joy and what uh, elation we all felt as we uh, took on this mantle and this task uh, to lead God's people. Our goal then and still is today is simply to do God's will. Yeah. And we are grateful and thankful for all of the support all of the prayers, all of the uh, well wishes that we've received uh, this this week, you know, and particularly over the years, we we can't we can't thank you enough for being so supportive of the ministry <laughs> that the Lord has given us, and uh, we pray that we've done good by you, Amen, and good by the Lord Himself as He favored us together to do this work that He has called us to do. We Amen. couldn't do it without you. Without you, you couldn't do it without us, and we couldn't do it without you. We are a team. We're Team New Hope, and we thank God for you. Definitely thank God for you. We couldn't do it without them. They couldn't do it without us, and we definitely couldn't do it without God. Without God on our side. Uh-huh. You know, the Bible says, if it had not been for the Lord who were on our side, our enemies would have destroyed us, devoured us a long time ago. Mm. But thanks to the covenant connection and the eternal provision that God always give us, in order to do what he assigned our hands to do. And we are so grateful and thankful. Well, we just come out of a week, a Passion Week. We've just come through Resurrection Sunday. And boy, what, what a service we had on yesterday. What a, what a word the Lord gave us on yesterday. And um, we're just so grateful for the opportunity. Listen, he is not dead. He is alive. He got up just like he said. And uh, we are so grateful and thankful that he did. He is not in that tomb. He is not, you know, there the angels came and announced it. I know who you're looking for. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He's not here, but he has gotten up just like he said. And this this week has has been a week of hope and action, really. has been a week of hope and action. And it falls right in line, prophets, with our theme for the year, Mm -hmm. embracing the promise of the promises of hope. Yes. And the Lord gave us so much hope this, this week to look forward to. Even though that we couldn't see it, even though others couldn't see it, couldn't sense it, they thought it was dead, it was done, but hope was kept alive. Mm-hmm. Hope was kept alive. Mm-hmm. Because on the third day, early in the morning, before the breaking <laughs> of dawn, Jesus was raised from the dead, not just with some power, but with all power in his hand. And man, what 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 a morning and what a turnaround that was. My there was God. so much hope, wasn't it? That was that was a whole lot of hope. And because he got up, like he said, I can face the day and I can face tomorrow. Yeah. And, and, God, and the next day and the, the next day, day and the next day. That is so awesome. And um and that's what it's all about. It's about embracing. It's about embracing the promises. The many full promises of hope that the Lord have given us. And he spoke that so plainly to us at the close of 2021 as we crossed over mm-hmm. into the year of 2022. That this would be the year that we would embrace the promises of hope. And when you embrace something, Bishop, you hold on to it. You don't yes. let it go. And, and whatever the words say, you hold on to it, whatever your situation, whatever your circumstance whatever your condition, you hold fast to it. You do not let it go. 
You know how sometimes you, um, um, your children, they want to hold on, <coughs> so they don't want to let go, but yeah. you have to allow them to go so they can grow and be and mature into what God wants them to be. Yeah. And so we have to, but one thing we must always hold on is to the word of God, because his word would not, it would not renege. It would always go forth. It would not return void. What it would never sent renege it out to do. That's right. And, and therefore, as we continue to embrace not just this promise, but every promise, mm -hmm. because God has made so many promises to us in his word. And tonight we can collectively and corporately uh, embrace every promise that the Lord has made for us and to us. All we got to do is find that God said mm -hmm. somewhere in this word, in that yeah. scripture. And once we find it, we embrace it, we hold on to it, and don't let go. Don't let go. Because the moment we let go is the moment we allow the enemy to come in. The moment we let go is the exact timing, the exact moment we allow the enemy to come in and rob us of all that God has promised. We got to stand firm. We got to stand tall. On the word of God, flat-footed, unmovable, always abounding. You know, I don't care what wind come, what, what wind may blow, come what come may. We have the promises of God, which are sure. They are sure. Every promise in God is yea and amen. So we want to encourage you to continue to hold on to the promises of our God. Hold on to the promises of our God. We learned how to secure our hope, and we always talk about this. We're going to rehearse this in your ear sight, in your ear gate. And uh, all this, you know, this, this year, I want you to remember this word, to remember what we got to do, so that we don't let it go. Because the moment we let it go is the moment we allow the devil to come in and rob us of all that we have gained. So we got to embrace the promises of hope by securing it. And we know we secure it by embracing prayer, mm -hmm. which is one of your favorite. Yes. By embracing praise, mm -hmm. which is one of our favorite, and, and embracing pursuit, our pursuit, pursuit of God. God. Mm -hmm. And you had so many wonderful things to say about pursuing. So talk about that pursuit, that pursuit section. I just um, when I when I say you pursue something, you go after it. Um, you, when you go after you, you 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 don't stop until you get what you're going after. And that's the thing. Like I'm telling you, that's how you did with me. That's you right. saw me. That's right. <laughs> you pursued it. I knew like, what I wanted. Yeah. And I went at it. And you went after it. <laughs> and the same thing when we want God, we got to go after him with all of our hearts, all of our soul. You don't let nothing stop you. You don't let nothing block you. You got to um, um, keep an aim. You got to be laser focused. And um, I'm pursuing you, God, till I get everything because every promise you promise, yay, amen. And God, I'm pursuing you with all my heart, all my soul, everything that's within you. And how do I pursue him? By, like you say, prayer, by praise, and by worship, and by um, being in the Word of God. I'm studying Him line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. You go after Him. You don't stop. When you wanted um, to accomplish something or whatever your dream was, your vision was, was it to go to school or was it to go for a trade? You, 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 you had to have some kind of map, some type of plan, and you follow that plan. And you don't detour from that plan. That's the same thing, the plan of God. He said, I know the plan. Yeah, I know the plans I have for you. said, the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to uh, give you a future that's filled with hope. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you know, I, I like I like when you say you don't de detour. Mm -hmm. You may deviate, but you come uh -huh. right back. You come back. But you don't, you don't take the detour. You may drift off, but you come back yeah. and, uh, and, and, get, and get back in right alignment. Yeah. And remain laser focused on the promises of our God. So we embrace prayer. We get in the right position. We get in the right posture. We get in the right place. And we press and pray until God have his perfect way. And have a positive attitude. Yes. You got to have the right attitude when you pray. You got to have the right mood. You got to have the right mindset. Come on here, girl. That's you know? right. That's right. You don't, go to, you don't go to God to prayer, in prayer, and not knowing what you're going for. Uh, we don't play with this. No, when we go to God in prayer, we mean business. And therefore, the Bible says, let us go boldly before the throne of grace that we may find help in the time of our need. And because of that, we know that help can be had and our mm -hmm. needs can be met mm -hmm. if we go to God in prayer. I like that. And we got to pursue him. 
We got to rearrange our day, rearrange our priorities. The Bible says in uh, 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 in the Bible in Matthew six thirty three, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things that we really want and need will be added unto us. So we know we got to secure it, and once we get it, how do we keep it? How do we sustain it? How do we keep it? And we know we sustain it by recognizing God's plan mm -hmm. for our life, recognizing God's purpose in our life, and recognizing God's power over our life. So when God really wants to move on our behalf and we got to keep it, we got to recognize his plan. Recognize his plan because he has a purpose. And if God has a plan, God will establish purpose mm -hmm. every time. Every time. He says, he says, he said, eyes have not seen, no, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the good thing that God has in store for them that love him, watch this, and for those who are called according to his purpose. So where there is a godly plan, there would be a godly purpose. And if there's a godly purpose, there would be a godly assignment. And if there's a godly assignment, God will give you grace to do what needs to be done in order to see it through full fruition. Mm -hmm. So we got to pursue God, and we got to understand the plan of God, the purpose, and the power of God. Mm -hmm. He will give us the grace and his power mm -hmm. and his favor. And we just got to get in the right um, place, place in the right um, location, in the right you know, position. Yeah. Now, this past week, we've seen classic examples in this third area as to how we share our hope. Now, we said on Sunday, when you look at the uh, Gospel of John, Chapter 2 and verse 19. Write this one down again. If you didn't get it Sunday, write it down now. The Gospel of John, chapter 2, verse number 19. Jesus said this on the outset of his ministry. This is what he said. He said, if you destroy this body, in three days, I will raise it up again. This is what he said on the outset, on the onset of his, his, his ministry. Before he was healing and teaching and miracles were flowing, before all the things that we know that he performed and, and wrought in Israel, uh, he said this, if you destroy this temple, mm. I will raise it up in three days. Now, they thought he was talking about the building that, that they were worshiping in. They said, wait a minute, Jesus, we, it took us 46 years to build this building, mm -hmm. and you're going to tear it down and build it back in three days? Mm -hmm. And the Bible said he was referring to his body, the temple. Know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He lives, he dwells in us, this body, the temple. And therefore, we understood from Matthew 28, Matthew 28, when they went to the sepulcher early that morning, yes. Sunday morning, looking for a body, the corpse, the corpse, Mary, Mary Magdalene, and Salome. Where is it? When they got up early to go to the sepulcher, when they got there, number one, they saw angels. Angels who were dressed in uh, white and was the confidence was like linen, like lightning. And they said this to uh, those three ladies. They said, I know who you're looking for. <laughs> you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was mm. crucified. That's a fact. He did die on Calvary, but he is not here. Then he said, he has, he has risen just like he, he said. said. Mm -hmm. And they said, see where they laid it. Yes. See the place where they laid it. Yes. And they're looking for a corpse. One they saw was his clothing hold up. <laughs> Jesus has gotten up from the grave. Hope. Hope was alive. Yeah, hope was alive. Hope was alive. <laughs> hope got up. Now hope, oh, hope was destroyed on Calvary <laughs> for some. Yeah. But Sunday morning he got he got up. Uh-huh. And that which was destroyed was made alive again. On Sunday morning. He said he was going to get up. He said. And, 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 and his word, you know, he, he would not renege on his word. <laughs> no. So he got up. And just like he said. Now, so many things had taken place that morning. We're not going to go over that again. But so many wonderful things took place that morning. But the key here is, is that these three ladies, these three women, who were going to anoint his body, discovered that he had been risen, had been raised from the dead. And they got a message. The message was, go tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. Mm. And they went running. They went running. 
would have ran too. They went running. <laughs> now here, 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 here's this: when you get a word from God. It ought to put running in your feet. Help me hear somebody. Yes, Lord. You are, can you imagine? He was dead. R- running from the got, graveyard. And he got up. And you was able to witness he got up. Yeah. And My they, God. And they went running. I mean, I can't imagine. Now, wow. They, they was not running because they were scared because they saw a ghost. They was running because they had a word that they had received that they had to deliver. <laughs> and that's the difference. That's the difference. They wouldn't run because they saw something that they were scared of. Uh-huh. They ran because they they had a message. <laughs> <laughs> they had a word like to we, deliver. But if we saw somebody get up. Yeah, now listen, if we <laughs> if we just saw that, you know, something else would have took place. But they were so encouraged, they were so inspired. Mm-hmm. And you could actually sense and see the hope mm-hmm. that had that had reoccurred in their spirit. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't, they wouldn't allow no negative nothing mm-hmm. to, to discourage them or to stop them. They was on a mission. Mm-hmm. And when you really grab onto hope like that, you ought to be on a mission and run for yeah, your and, life. And definitely when you recognize this, the Lord, he got up, like he said, and they recognized um, what he, he, all hope was alive. Yeah. <laughs> now, they, they ran with a message to tell the disciples that Jesus had been raised from the dead. But the soldiers, the Roman soldiers, who was there, who saw and witnessed the angels coming that night, early morning, and rolling back the stone, they they were, they were felt down as dead men. <laughs> yeah. And those who saw it, they ran also. Mm-hmm. But they ran to tell the chief priests and, 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 and all the Sanhedrin council, all the enemies of Christ, they went to tell them that Jesus had gotten up from the grave. They recognized that he had power. Yeah. That was power to get up. Yeah. He was asleep. He was dead. But he risen. He resurrected. And he had all power. I'm going to run and tell everybody. Yeah, now, now, Jesus, now the, he was dead. But when not, when they not. ran with that message, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't bite their tongue. They, uh, they, they didn't mix the message. They told them exactly what had taken place. Yes. And the chief priests and the Sanhedrin council said to these soldiers, don't deliver that message. I want you to tell I want you to tell everybody that his 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 followers stole his body. <laughs> and we're gonna pay you some money uh to support this big lie. You know that that mm-hmm. was that was the big lie. Yeah they want to lie. I want you to support this big lie. We're mm-hmm. gonna advertise it and we're gonna send people out to support this big mm-hmm. lie. And we're going to give you some money, and we're going to cover you yeah. with the uh, with the uh, uh, Roman procreator, so if, so you won't you won't lose your life. Wow! Because here it is, they were Roman soldiers, and for abandoning abandoning their post, they would be subject to be hung or to be crucified themselves mm-hmm. uh, under punishment. So, in order for them to go away free, the chief priests and the Sanhedrin council covered that big lie and that's how the big lie got out and even to this day the big lie still mm-hmm. is out there that he did not rise mm-hmm. he didn't he didn't get up from the dead but his disciples stole his body mm-hmm. that's a lie yeah, we too. we know we know that he got up early one sunday morning now that was the it was so much excitement on sunday it was so much excitement on sunday had two messages one that was he's alive and for real mm-hmm. to to alert to all of his disciples and the other one to tell what had happened and then they tried to change the narrative couldn't happen so i always wonder prophets what happened on that monday morning the morning after after he got up yeah the more you know the morning after mm-hmm. now you, some, some of you all know about the morning after but what happened the morning after what was the setting what was the attitude? What was the conversation going on in the community? What was the state of those disciples the morning after resurrection morning? You talking about the, you talking about the, the, the multitude, the other ones, the unbelievers? Yes, the multitude. And, and then what about the, the and, inner circle? And the inner his disciples. Yeah. So we, we know we know from the, from the writing between Mark, between Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John 
we know that when Jesus was being crucified, that his disciples were scattered. Many of them went in hiding. Couldn't be found. Couldn't be seen. Mm -hmm. They were scared for their life. So now, here we go, three women, the morning of, yeah. with a message that he is not dead. He has risen. But he has risen. Just like he said. Just like he said. And he said, and he said go tell my disciples mm -hmm. to meet me in Galilee. Mm -hmm. Now, the morning after, they said, what are you talking about? Girl, are you, have you lost your mind? Mm -hmm. What do you mean he's alive? Everybody saw that he was crucified on Calvary. Mm -hmm. Everybody saw that he was put in Joseph Barry's tomb. What do you mean he's alive? The reason why they could say it, they were there. They witnessed it. The other one, anonymous, they are away because they didn't believe. They're not going to say he has risen because... That, that that was against what they, they believed. They wanted everybody to think that the, the Savior, he didn't, he didn't risen. That's just too much of power. And they wanted the power. Yeah. But God had all power. All hope had risen, just like he said. His voice, he got up. But if you was in the inner circle, you saw what Jesus done, and you believed those disciples. And when they got there, those ladies, they, they, they saw him. They saw him get up. They saw him. He's not here. They came to... They thought he was there. Y'all, y'all come. He done got up. Well, one, one, one writer say, one of the gospel writers said that when they saw Jesus, they bowed down and they worshiped him. Mm -hmm. Now, this is after he That's got up. In a circle. Yeah. The three ladies. Yeah. And, and they touched him. Mm -hmm. So that means they handled him. Flesh. They handled his flesh. His resurrected flesh. They handled him. They talked with him. They, they, they validated the fact that he was not dead, but he was alive. So even when the disciples who wasn't there heard their testimony, even though they didn't believe it, that didn't change who they were. Exactly. Or what they knew. Exactly. So they were overly convincing mm -hmm. to the fact, well, you don't have to believe us now. Just meet him in Galilee. Mm -hmm. So the morning after, gather. the morning after in the, amongst the saints, his inner circle, you said, right? Mm-hmm. Amongst them, there was jubilation mm -hmm. because now tears were being dried up, mm -hmm. and now they were, they were now living in a period of a state of expectation. Exactly. They couldn't wait to see him. They yeah. couldn't wait to see him. Yeah, they had recognized that he was no longer there, and, he was, and, and we want to see him again because he done got up. And all of our whatever they, in their hearts, like you say, I, we got to embrace hope. We got to embrace that God, our Savior, done got up. And because he got up, we can get up. So hope was, was, was alive amongst the Christians. Yes. Amongst those disciples. Hope was, was being generated. Was, was saying, hey, you don't have to cry no more. Come on. You don't have to hold your head down. He's alive. The Savior is alive. So hope was being regenerate, re-energized. But amongst, amongst his critics, they were in fear because the big lie had the cover, and it had no foundation. Mm -hmm. So they had to cover. They tried to cover up what God uncovered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they tried to cover up what the Lord uncovered. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that was an impossibility. So there were two things going on the morning after Christ rose from the dead. Right. And every day since then, mm -hmm. every day since then, he would make sudden appearances. Matter of fact, they'd be locked up in a room. And he just show up without even knocking on the door. Wow. He just shows up. I mean, and then while he shows up, he begins to talk to him. And on one occasion, old Thomas called Doubting Thomas. Mm -hmm. You see, he said, I don't believe it. I won't believe he's alive until I put my see the nail prints and put my hand in his side. And Jesus showed up and said, Thomas, <laughs> he moved his clothes and said, here's what his spirit made. Thomas, here are my hands. Mm -hmm. And when Thomas saw that, he, he cried out, my Lord and my God, my God. So that's just like some, some of the people today, no matter what they see, God, he's undone and stuff. There's going to be some of them just always doubt, don't believe. But those who had been around him and saw um, the work, saw the, 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 the dead being risen, they saw the sick being healed. Yeah. And they saw all that. They had faith. They, they, they knew that, that Christ, that, that his word, it was, it, it, it was sure. After experiencing yes. all of the, the goodness. And it was concrete. Yeah. And every day was a building block. Every day was a building block to get them to a better place in their faith. Yeah. Every day was a, a building block.
to help them to solidify their faith and to get them into a better place so they can walk out and live out their faith. And that's where we are today. That's where we are today. God wants to get us to a better place. Here we go. Now that he has been raised from the dead, he has been resurrected from the dead, every day he wants to get us to a better place where we can now share our hope. And we have a test, a testimony. We have a testimony that is sure. And we know that in order to share our faith, to share our hope, we've got to reinforce our faith. So the Lord took time for them to get it together, get past their hurt, get past their unbelief, get past the questions they may have. Uh, he answered all, he resolved all, and he convinced all who really wanted to know. So if you really want to know tonight if he is real or if he can or if he is able, I want you to know that he is. God is real. God is able, and he can do anything but fail, and he's very much alive. He's, a very, he's, he's very, very much alive. alive. He is not dead. He is very much alive. And therefore, we need to reinforce our faith so that we can share our hope. Number two, this is the time where we got to reestablish our focus. They lost it. The disciples lost it mm -hmm. when he died. Yes. Yeah. But now that he's alive, they can what? Reestablish their focus. Mm -hmm. and, and, and since we know that he is alive and that he is on the right hand of power, we too, we too can reestablish our focus. We don't have to walk in the same things that we used to walk in or live the same way that we used to live or do the same things that we've always done. We can, we can be better. Mm -hmm. We can do better. Yes, you can do better. Of course, we all can do better by, 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 by giving of yourself, by doing what the Word say do, by abiding in the Word, trusting in the Word, by, by sharing your experience, sharing your ideas, sharing what God has uh, done in your life. And if he's done it in my life, he can do it into yours. So we can always be uh, um, better, and we can always share our experience and tell people, like whatever they're going through, this is only temporarily. God is with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Hope risen over 2,000 years ago for, this time, for such a time as this. And whatever you may be going through right now, you're just going through it. You're not going to stay in it because the storm don't last always. Trials don't last always. Weeping may endure for a night, but, but joy cometh in the morning. So you have the victory. You got God. You got the victory. You got God, you got hope. You got God, hallelujah, your dreams are alive. You are alive. You can do anything through him but fail. God, our hope risen. And because our hope, God has hope, I got hope. And anything that I want to do, I can accomplish. I can complete it. It is a done deal in Jesus Christ. I love it. I love it. Peter, one of his prominent supporters while he was living, prior to his death, he was one of the, Yes. The ones that always outspoken one. When Christ died, listen, he was he was done. He was on his way to Emmaus. He was walking on the Emmaus road. And wow. Jesus wanted to, you know, get him back. So he stopped walking with him. He walked the whole day, talking and sharing. And Peter was saying, Man, it's 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 crazy. It's 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 it's, it's, it's it just doesn't make sense how they've done my Lord on Calvary. And they shared about all that. And as Jesus talked to him about, you know, what he had promised him, mm -hmm. end of the day, Peter finally recognized who he was. <laughs> Peter, he saw the nail, he saw the nail prints, he saw the spear, and his eyes opened, and he finally recognized he was talking with Jesus. And this was his testimony. Did not our hearts burn within as he spoke with us along the way? It's something about when you are in doubt and need to be reaffirmed, when you're in doubt and need to be mm -hmm. reaffirmed, all you got to do is spend a little time with Jesus, mm -hmm. talking with him, Get praying, getting in his presence, mm -hmm. seeking his face. Devote yourself to him. Yes. And somewhere along the line, he will reassure you, reaffirm your faith 
And now you can get back in the game and you can run on and see what the end is going to be. So. Thank you, Lord. That's what's happening now. Not only must we refocus on our faith, reinforce our faith, not only must we reestablish our focus, but we need to now also reaffirm our future. There is more in front of us than what was ever behind us. There is more ahead of us than what was behind us. And we gotta we gotta continue now to remain focused. That's why Paul says, I press. I press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forward to those things that are before. So we gotta press on, we gotta run on, we gotta pray on, we gotta seek on, we gotta do what is right in his sight. And know that our future has been reaffirmed. The promise, not only in this life, but life everlasting. Eternal life is ours. Eternal. How long is that? Eternal. Everlasting. Never ending. That's our future. That's who we are in Christ. We are more than a conqueror. Amen. We are more than an overcomer. We are Christ's children. We are Christ's seed. And therefore, he promised that he would never leave us nor, forsake us, nor forsake us, but always be there with us, even to the end of the age. He is not dead, saints. He is very much alive. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we, we hold on, and we hold out. We hold on, and we hold out. Listen, we are so grateful to every one of you. And we are so excited about your future and about what God mm. is about to do in your life. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men, and I mean this, all of the good things that God has in store for those who love him and for those who are called according to his purpose. I believe God prophets. I believe him too. And we just got to recommit, all of us, new hope. Recommit with all our heart and all our soul. In Jesus' day, the multitude would disappear at sundown, and then they re reappear sun up. While the disciples stayed with Jesus, we got to stay with him. We can't just go and come back. We got to stay with him. We got to hold fast to the word and trust the word and just, just declare the word. Don't, don't, don't be moved by what others may or may not do. You know, don't, don't base your hopes on what others may or may not do. But build your hope on Christ, Jesus Christ, and his word. His word will never, ever fail. Heaven and earth will pass away. But Jesus said his word will stand forever. We can trust his word. We can have faith in his word. And we can have faith in God. That's what Jesus said. Have faith in God. Just have faith. And if you got the faith in God, you can speak to your mountains. And you can have whatever you say if it's right in God. God knows what he wants to do. And Jesus Christ himself, who is God in the flesh, have made it possible now for us to come back and write a line. Yes. Yeah. And get right with God. Get right. Mm -hmm. Come on back home. Come on back in the fellowship. Amen. Realize. We are waiting to see you on Sunday morning. Realize. I can't wait to see you as we celebrate together. 37 years in ministry at the New Hope Church. We got guests coming in. We got, we're going to have high praise, high, high church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I just can't wait to see what God is going to do. Are you excited about it, Prophet? I'm always excited whenever <laughs> I can get 37 years. Of course, I'm excited about still being on the battlefield and just thanking God for those who was with us in the beginning. And we've grown and they've grown and we've grown together. And I just thank God, my God, for 37 years, not throwing in the towel, staying steadfast, staying immovable, always abounding in his love. I thank God for you, New Hope. And we just continue to, going to continue to pray for you because we love you. 
and all of that are watching. We pray the blessings of the Lord. May each and every one of you rich. Would you pray for them right now as we close? Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, dear God, for hope that risen over 2,000 years ago. And because hope risen, God, we have hope in all that we dream and we desire, God. We thank you, dear God, that we have victory. We thank you, God, for we are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We are more than conquerors. God, we just thank you, God, because you're the blessing of the Lord. You make us rich and add no sorrow unto it. God, bless your people, God. Endow them, God. Um, favor them, God. Enlarge their ter territory. In Jesus' name we pray. And we give all the glory. Amen. Amen. I, I feel that there's someone tonight who's really been having a difficult time. Not just because of this pandemic, but you've been having a difficult time in your finances. You've been having a difficult time in your marriage. The Lord told me to tell you that there's relief coming. In three days, in three days, you're going to see a noticeable change. Doors, incredible doors are going to open just for you in your finances and in your marriage. Listen, I heard that plainly as she was praying. The incredible doors, incredible favor is going to hit your house. Things are going to turn around for you in your finances and in your marriage. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. name. In Jesus' Thank name. name. In Jesus' name. My God. God bless you tonight. And heaven smile on you. Tomorrow Ooh. morning at 6 a.m. we're going yes. to be having our breakthrough prayer. Please join us. If you have yes. not had an opportunity, listen. Just call in. Yes. Put the phone on mute. And let it penetrate, saturate your environment. Yes. Hear the prayers of those who are going mm. before God on your behalf. Prayer changes things. Prayer makes a difference. And this is what God is calling us back to. You can get there. Amen. He said, my house should be called a house of prayer. The, the number to call is area code 857-232-0158. Area code 857-232-0158. And once you get there, the access code is 789-086. Yes. 789-086. Join us tomorrow morning yes. for our breakthrough prayer. Yes. God bless you. Heaven smile on you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you today, God. Yeah. And gonna continue to pray for you. Continue. Not gonna stop. Continuation. God bless each and every one of you. Everyone. Pray the favor of God. Brighter days. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Acts of anything in his name, and it's a done deal. You know that. Acts, and it shall be given. Shall. I'm telling you, I, I'm a witness. We love y'all. We pray for you. It's continued prayer. Hoping for better days because I prayed for you. God bless you all. Stay on the battlefield looking for y'all Sunday. Come on and, and, and just let's celebrate together. Each and everyone, thank you.